Madam President, I have made it clear that I oppose the confirmation of Jack Lew to the most serious cabinet position of Secretary of the Treasury. The President's cabinet nominee should be given substantial deference. That is not in doubt. But our Constitution, makes clear that appointments to high government office may only be made by and with the advice and consent of the Senate. Certainly the Senate is not a rubber stamp or a potted plant. A decent respect for the seriousness of this occasion, for my colleagues and their opinions, for the president and for the nominee requires in this case, I believe that I set forth my objections to the appointment. And they're serious. And what I say, I believe, is important, important for the institution of the Senate and important uh, for our country. I don't have a personal relationship or extended meetings with Mr. Liu. My objections arise primarily and first from his performance as director of the Office of Management and Budget. Uh, it is in many ways a key com position in our government that is the office through which the president controls all the departments and agencies of our government, which he is required to supervise. Normally, and necessarily, the OMB director is a single office that drives efficiency and demands accountability on behalf of the president and the American people throughout our great bureaucracy. In that aspect of his job, I've seen little leadership. And at, uh, at this time of surging debt, I would rate that performance as an F. I have never seen a consistent, determined effort from the Director of Office of Management and Budget to make more productive this government of ours. Indeed, his primary effort consistently has seemed to have been to defend any program under attack, scrutiny, or question, rather than examining vigorously to save every single dollar that can be saved for the taxpayers of the country. If the OMB director won't insist on efficiency and good government, who will? Secretary of Energy pushing failed Solyndra programs, is that who we look to, or the GSA leaders who host hot tub parties in Las Vegas? This government of ours has never been more poorly managed. It just has never had, uh, for a number of years, the serious oversight and management from the top supervisory agencies. Congress is not empowered to daily manage the agencies of America. That is the chief executive's job and the primary person in his administration, President Obama's administration, charged with this duty is the director of office and management and budget. At least historically, that has been the case. But my concerns go deeper than that. I believe that every public official in this nation owes an absolute loyalty to the United States, to the betterment of this country and its government, and to the institutional processes that lead to the governing of America. There can be no doubt that every government official from the president on down is accountable to the institutions of our government and to the people, ultimately. Without doubt, the direction of OMB, the director of OMB has such a duty. He's required to meet that duty with honor, honesty, efficiency, and responsiveness. He serves us. We don't serve him. He serves the American people. The American people send their money to Washington, and they expect it will be honestly and openly managed, accountable. They have every right to demand high performance from all officials, but particularly the director of the Office of Management and Budget. Surely there can be no higher duty for such an important official than to periodically report to the people truthfully on the important affairs of state, specifically to report the financial condition of the nation and to produce a budget plan that will uh, fix it. 
Without doubt, the great challenge of our time is how to confront effectively the unsustainable debt course we're now on. That is clearly the greatest threat to our republic. Admiral Mullen, the former chairman of Joint Chiefs of Staff, staff has said that debt is the greatest threat to our uh, national security. We are heading to a financial crisis if we don't change. All experts have told us that, including the Simpson and Bowles of the President's Debt Commission. They said, quote, this nation has never faced a more predictable financial crisis. They jointly gave that statement to us in the Budget Committee. Federal Reserve Chairman Bernanke, when asked about it, he made comment about some of the long, great projections of debt out in that future. He said, well, that won't happen. You'll never get there. In effect, he said, we would have a crisis before that happens. We are on an unsustainable debt path. And even uh, the current uh, uh, Secretary of Treasury, uh, Secretary Geithner, uh, made the same comments about Director Liu's budget. He acknowledged that that budget left the country on an unsustainable financial path. Therefore, the report of the nation's top management official on budget and management and to Congress on these issues must be absolutely accurate. It must be true. His budget that he would set forth as director of the budget each year is required by law. The president submits a budget uh, must put the nation on a sound and sustainable course, not keep us on an unsustainable course. And if changes in our operating methods of the country are needed, he should say so and help lead that reform effort. So he is the one who keeps the books. He's the one who must, along with the president, rally the nations as mayors and county commissioners and governors have done all over America to rein in reckless spending and in unacceptable debt in their jurisdictions. Why is it not happening here, now, at this time of national crisis? In February of 2011, as director of OMB, Mr. Liu produced a budget for the president, and he presented it to the people and to the Congress. That was February uh, uh, two years ago. Uh, he was a budget director. The budget he prepared utterly failed to meet the needs of the nation. It just did. As Mr. Bowles said, right after the budget was announced by Mr. Liu, he said with great disappointment, quote, the White House budget request, excuse me, the White House budget request, quote, goes nowhere near where they will have to go to avoid our fiscal nightmare, close quote. This is a man President Obama appointed to head uh, the uh, debt commission. And he says this budget came nowhere near where they'll have to go to avoid our fisc uh, fiscal nightmare. This budget was a disaster. Instead of making our debt problem better, it really made it worse. Uh, it, it taxed more and it spent more. I was shocked and amazed. Now, please remember, this was on February of 2011, not long after the midterm congressional elections in which the American people rose up and shellacked a lot of big spending, big spenders, uh, and uh, demanded really that we get our financial house in order. The American people were shocked by the explosion of debt and the surge of big government, and they demanded more accountability. They insisted on it. To produce a budget that made things worse would not have been a popular thing to do. Present a budget that really changed our debt course, not at all, was not a popular thing to do. Uh, imagine what went on in the White House. I just, I'm just a member of the Senate. I observe these things like all of us. I know and the feeling of the moment and what was happening. So the question was, would the President of the United States, now after the midterm elections, they gave majority to the House of Representatives, 
uh, would, would at that point a, a, a policy, a budget, set forth a sound, sustainable path for America uh, that could lead the country out of this fix. And I know they discussed it. Surely they did. Surely it was the most important issue that they faced. Would we back down from spending and investment and taxes? Would we uh, opt for a more limited growth in spending in America uh, or not? Well, they made their decision. It's pretty clear two decisions were made. And I don't think this is unfair to analyze it in this way. First, they decided that despite the election, they would not curtail spending or lay out a plan that would alter the debt course of America, that they would not fix and save and strengthen our entitlement programs like Social Security, and they would lie in wait, I guess, uh, for anybody in the House of Representatives particularly and criticize their plan. They would not lay out any plan in their budget, which is a time that you would normally uh, lay out your plan, and they would uh, um, set up a method to attack the Republicans when they produce their budget as required by law, and their budget would have to deal with these things and propose real cuts in spending, and they would criticize that. Apparently, that's the decision that they made. But this presented a problem to announce a budget that did not do what the public had just demanded, control spending and control debt, would not be popular. You wouldn't be popular. So what do you do then? It's pretty clear to me how the conundrum was decided. Mr. Liu would go before the American people and Congress and just declare that the budget he had put forth, did put the nation on a sound financial course, that it would end, end deficits and put us in a position to pay down our debt. He just decided, they just decided that Mr. Liu would go out despite what was in the budget and declare that it would do those things. Thus, the statements of Mr. Liu amounted to what I have called and will explain the greatest financial misrepresentation concerning the finances of this nation ever made. And if somebody's got a, a, a something different, I'd like to see it. I'd like to see somebody say, uh, when, this, when we finish talking about this, that they have other examples of this kind of misrepresentation. These statements were made carefully and deliberately, calculatedly, and for the political purpose, I have to say, of misleading the public. You may say, surely not, Jeff. You're exaggerating this situation. Surely he wouldn't do that. Let me tell you what happened. The day before the budget was to be released on a Monday, Mr. Liu went on the Sunday news programs. to report on the budget that the president would be submitting and explain what was in it. This is what he said on CNN. That's Sunday. Now, I'll put this up because the words should live in infamy. This is how he described the budget that he laid out. Quote, our budget will get us over the next several years to the point where we can look the American people in the eye and say, we're not adding to the debt anymore. We're spending money that we have each year. And then we can work on bringing down our national debt. That is exactly what the American people wanted. That's exactly what they wanted to hear. There was no qualification in that language, none whatsoever. He was speaking directly to the American people on the most looked at news programs, I guess, of the week, the Sunday morning news programs. He was, said it, similar things on several of the other programs that he participated in February 12, 2001. No qualifications. That's, how could it be heard otherwise than those plain words would suggest? that we had a plan 
that the president had a plan, that Mr. Liu was producing a budget his office produced that would make sure that we were on a right course, a sustainable financial course. We wouldn't be adding to the debt anymore. We're not adding to the debt anymore. What else did that suggest, Madam President? It suggested we could just relax. We didn't need to talk about real spending reductions. We had a plan. Just follow the president's plan. Everything is going to be okay. Relax. Don't get too excited like you did in this last election. We got everything under control. Our plan fixes it. Now, that's essentially what happened. But the budget documents that Mr. Liu submitted and the budget documents are this thick. They are his documents. Come out of the Office of Management and Budget to lay out the detailed financial plan that his budget said. And the question is, did his own documents confirm this analysis? Did it come close to? Well, these documents will reveal the truth. In his own account, actually, his documents revealed a rosy scenario of the truth. But the numbers I'm going to give you are what his documents revealed, and they've turned out to be uh, less positive even than they predicted. In his own accounting tables, Mr. Liu's 10-year budget got nowhere close to the point where we could say we're not adding to the debt anymore or in a position to pay down the debt. To anybody that has the slightest concern for the meaning of words or who believes in the most basic concept of an objective truth, this statement must be condemned. Even though the Lou budget documents made calculations more favorable than the rosy uh, project, projections than, uh, uh, than CBO, it still unequivocally showed that over the 10-year budget window, there was never a year, not one ever, when we would be able to pay down the debt or have a balanced budget or not add more debt. Indeed, over the 10-year period that his budget covered, that he was referring to in this document, we would add $13 trillion to the total debt of the United States, almost doubling it. $9 trillion to the uh, public debt, $13 trillion to the gross debt. That was a different calculated. The uh, public debt's a little smaller. The year with the single lowest deficit out of 10 was $600 billion in debt. In other words, the lowest single annual deficit in 10 years was $600 billion. President Bush's highest deficit he ever had was less than $500 billion in eight years. This was a huge debt, $600 billion, but it would average almost a trillion dollars a year. A thousand billion a year on average. Leaving us clearly on the same unsustainable path we had been on. Then on Tuesday... Mr. Liu appeared before the Budget Committee. I'm ranking Republican on the Budget Committee. And I, had, I, I was amazed at what he was saying on television. I was scrambling around looking at the documents. It became clear that this wasn't close to correct. How could the Budget Director of the United States of America go on national TV and make these kind of statements? If we have any expectation of truth, in Washington that the budget director is going to tell us we're on a sound path when it didn't appear that they were so. And indeed, it wasn't so. So he came before, and I quoted this CNN statement to him. I read it back to him and directly asked whether his statement was accurate. And this is what he replied. It's an accurate statement that our current spending will not be increasing the debt. We've stopped spending money we don't have, he added. Further, let me note that outside the 10-year window, based on the financial plan that that budget set forth, 
the deficits got worse. They were going up in the out years. The lowest year was 600, but they were going up every single year by his own accounting. And CBO's numbers were much higher in the debt that would be added to the country. Though he, so this was just to me uh, a most stunning development. And uh, I don't believe it could be explained away. It's obvious he determined that he was going to stand pat, stand with his story, uh, which was a political narrative that they wanted to spin. They wanted to spin a political narrative, but it wasn't accurate. And that's important for us. If the chief budget person in America needs to tell the American people in the budget committee of the United States Senate the absolute truth about the financial condition of this country. He is not entitled to sugarcoat it, and he's absolutely not entitled to totally misrepresent it. So I examined him. Well, he said there's a deal, there's a primary debt. And we, we, we're going to have a primary deficit. Or we, we, so what is this? Primary deficit. Well, you don't count interest. I kid you not. The budget director of the United States of America said this statement of fact, as I interpret it, was not inaccurate because he was not counting the interest on the debt. Did he qualify that when he told the American people that? No, he did not. Did he make any kind of representation to that effect? No. And, and I would suggest that the numbers clearly show, even if you have that kind of bogus accounting where you don't count your interest, who could possibly write a household budget, a city budget, a state budget that didn't account for the interest you have to pay every year? How ridiculous is that? That's the kind of phony, gimmicky accounting that makes put this country on a path to financial crisis. But that's what he said. But even then, by that definition, it was not true. And this would not be true in its faults. Well, uh, phony accounting procedures, these budget manipulation and gimmicks like this primary uh, balance idea is the way politicians have maneuvered us into a situation that our path is so dangerous. American people are not happy about it, and they should not be happy. There's no reason we have placed this country at such risk because of debt and spending. No reason that we should do that. They sent us here to this Congress for a lot of reasons, but the primary reason uh, really is to properly manage their money, manage their program. And so, Madam President, I see my colleague from Vermont, and I, I think we may get there a different way, but I think we may share some of the same views about this nomination, and I respect his independence and gumption, as we would say in Alabama, to express his views openly and directly. But I would, ju I would just say that uh, I'll talk some more because this is an important matter and I don't intend to let it go lightly because I believe this Congress and the American people are entitled to honest, sober, serious commentary and information from our leaders and we're not getting it. And it makes it hard to get the American people to gather to figure out how to tighten our belts and how to handle the financial crisis that we're in if we got top officials saying we don't have a crisis, don't worry about it, we've got a plan that fixes it. So I know that I don't see any reason to the extend for a longer period of time the Lou nomination. He's come out of committee. He had bipartisan support. Uh, and he's going to be in a position to be confirmed. But uh, I'm not going to vote for him. I'd like to talk some more about some of the ad additional problems that we have uh, with his nomination, and we'll do, do so later. Uh, and I believe it's my responsibility to do so, and I intend to fulfill it. I thank the chair and we yield the floor.